Hello all. I got a couple of people that had asked me about uh, <clears throat> my pin router. I made this uh, yeah, at least 25 years ago, maybe almost 30 years ago. But uh, it's still one of my favorite tools in the shop. And it can be a pretty useful thing. And uh, I use it to make my foam patterns. And uh, I thought I'd just show you a few of the basics on it though. But uh, there's a couple of things that uh, really make it a pretty versatile machine. And one of them is the guide pin. And what I use for a guide pin um, is a dowel pin. And in this case, it's quarter inch dowel pin and a quarter inch cutter. And that means that when you have a pattern, like uh, say this, that's on the bottom for my carburetor main well body, it's going to trace out and cut that exact same size as that pattern profile is on the bottom. But a couple other things that, that are pretty useful um, about it is, is that if you want to cut slightly larger, um, I have these guide bushings that I just slip over the pin. And in this case, this one adds uh, a sixteenth of an inch uh, to the radius or an eighth of an inch to the diameter. And you can use different pin sizes like uh, these two here. Uh, this One of them adds a sixteenth and one of them adds an eighth of an inch um, to the side on that. And uh, the other way you can do it too is, is there's these bushings like this that drop in uh, to the guide plate. And I'll probably have to give you a close up of it so you can see that. But this would increase the diameter a lot, which would mean, you know, you can cut however many times larger you want to with however you increase the guide bushing. And likewise, if uh, you had a bigger pin in here and a bigger bit, you could reduce the diameter of the pin and cut undersized. So it gives you, a, um, you know, a bit of versatility as to um, how much larger or smaller than a particular pattern you have that you cut. Which, uh, you know, on something like the profile, you don't use that much. But if you're cutting, say, circles and you want to cut steps into it or you want to alter the diameter of a, of a circle jig you've got, like, say, this one here, which is a very simple pattern that I'm going to start out with because I'm going to make one of these uh, carbur carburetor mainwell bodies here so you can see what I'm talking about. But uh, this is the blank that I use so I can mount it on the fixture. But... I can cut and I will cut um, a sixteenth of an inch larger over and undersized on this in order to get the uh, dimensional layout I want on the blank. So I'll show you that. And then I'll also have to show you um, a close up probably of the pin and the depth stop mechanism because there's a depth stop mechanism that I use on more complicated patterns and I call it a key. But uh, what this does is, is that I make myself a little work instruction because there's all kinds of different combinations of uh, cutting height and pin height, depending on where on the pattern uh, and the guide I'm cutting on. And it gets kind of confusing. So um, on more complicated parts like this uh, carburetor main wall uh, casting, there is, I think that there's like uh, eight different combinations of pin position uh, and, uh, and height. And it gets kind of tedious to um, have to change the height all the time manually and measure it. And this way, um, I can kind of do it on the fly and uh, never have to unmount the pattern uh, off of, of the, uh, the uh, uh, template once I get going. So uh, anyway, I'll give you a couple of close-ups here on the, the, the uh, depth stop mechanism. It's just a limit switch on that, but I'll show you how the uh, key works on, on the limit switch. And uh, then I'll uh, cut a blank and I'll, what we're going to do then is make one of these carburetor main wells. Um, so, so you can see how all that works. So here's a close up of the uh, depth stop mechanism. Um, usually I have just have this one on there, which is just a a depth stop that I can adjust with a check screw there or I can undo the wing and slide it up and down the actuator rod to make gross adjustments on that. But instead um, I've got this little spring-loaded uh, positioning stop. Down here at the bottom is a limit switch so as the actuator travels it runs the uh, the rod into the limit switch and that's what uh, controls the, uh, the height on that. But in this case um, I've got this key, and you can see the key's got all kinds of steps in it um, and uh, the slot, so I can slide this thing um, under uh, the uh, check nut like this. So say it, uh, I want to change the position um, to the one that corresponds to A, I depress this against the spring, 
and I release it back and it, uh, it decreases the height at which the bit will insert by the thickness um, that I have in the key. And then I can just uh, keep stepping from one to the next and, and sequentially change all the dip to all the different uh, stopping positions in a kind of a analog way, if you will, on that. But then I've got a work instruction uh, drawn out for myself that tells me what the pin position is and what the, uh, the depth position is per the key for each feature on the main well that I make. And that way I just systematically go through my work instruction and set the pin to the pin height that's called for and then the, the depth to the cutting depth and uh, it makes it foolproof because otherwise you can, you can blow up a pattern by getting confused and, and uh, setting the depth at the wrong depth of cut. But this makes it a lot easier on complicated parts. On, on simple parts where there's only one or two adjustments, I don't uh, usually mess around with making a key. But on more complicated ones like this, a key can be pretty useful. All right, so then here's a close-up of the pin. This is the uh, quarter-inch dowel pin um, that I mentioned uh, there. And then now you can see that uh, here are the guide bushings that I can slip over the guide pin. So this one I'll be using on the main well here. And that one, it increases the, uh, the diameter um, of cut by an eighth of an inch. It's a sixteenth of an inch um, per side on that. Uh, but you can see you can have uh, any uh, bushing that you want. And it's just a, it's a quick way to change over the, the guide pin cutting depth. And another way to do it with um, really uh, gross adjustments is this uh, insert that I have here actually is machined for these guide bushings that you probably recognize them as being used in the uh, uh, bottom of a handheld router. But I use them here in this insert plate and you can change them real quickly. In fact, you don't even have to screw them in. You just drop them in, the workpiece holds them in place, and uh, you can cut, in this case, it'd be cutting, uh, well, it looks like 3 sixteenths a side uh, bigger. So it'd cut uh, 3 eighths on a diameter larger, or you know, just whatever size guide bushing that you would put in there to, uh, to suit uh, to do that. But uh, I rarely use the ones here. I usually just use the ones centered in the, uh, and it's actually mounted in the router that I have below the table and I've got these things lined up so the registration is just so. And then another um, trick, if you will, to using um, a, uh, a pin router is you, get, you try to get them set up so they're just perfectly um, aligned with the bit. But uh, in the pin router, um, if you always position the, the guide the same way and you do this and not walk the, the pattern around, um, the bit, if there is any misregistration at all, all it does is slightly shift the pattern um, or the, the um, part that you're cutting on the pattern and offsets it just slightly. So if there is any error, you can gr greatly minimize the error just by keeping the part in the same orientation with respect to the bit um, as you cut it. And it just helps a lot with uh, accuracy on that. So anyway, um, I'll... Uh, I got everything set up here and I'll take you through the steps of how I make one of these carburetor main wells. All right, we're going to get on and try to make one of these main well uh, carburetor casting patterns here. And uh, But before I can do that and mount it on the template that uh, makes it, I need to cut a blank for it. And the blank um, just has two tapered holes. Um, that's where the Venturi's fit later in the carburetor, but these plugs then will mount that blank uh, on the pattern. But uh, I need to cut those features into the blank first, so let's see if we can do that here quickly. Um, I do have this little guide bushing on here, so you'll see me switch that. That's uh, how I've kind of tuned the diameter to get what the, the diameter that I want. But other than that, it's just a simple fixture here. You see, it's simple as can be. It's just two holes I drilled in there with the Forstner bit, and uh, that guide pin will will guide it. And then uh, you'll see that I'll make a, a cut almost all the way through, and then I'll stop the router and punch out the the uh, the plugs in the center. I do that because uh, if I don't, the plugs get caught up in the bit. Um, it'll actually rattle the bit enough that it'll it'll gouge the sidewall a little bit noticeably. So I stopped just uh, short of that to do that, but uh, we'll see. Let's get on with it.
got uh, two straight through holes and now we're going to move over here to the uh, three degree taper bit and taper those holes. assemble and mount it in the next uh, step. All right, back with you. Let's uh, see how we did here on making the blank. Um, fit on the uh, pattern here. Compressed air to blow this thing up. All right, let's see how we did on fit with the uh, plug. Oh yeah, that's a nice tight fit there. So that, it's a nice little tight compression fit. Let's see about the other one.
Oh uh, yeah, both of those. That's a really nice fit. All right, so we'll take and mount this up now. Wrong way. Take that this way. All right. Now we're in business. You can get the cotton. I want to get the initial height set here. Uh, I didn't do that. That's uh. We'll go do that right now, just so we can show you how we set it up. So the first cut. It's full depth. All right, so what I'm going to do here I actually want to cut this one to one to the exact size of this pattern but because I'm roughing out the blank I'm going to put this bushing on there which gives me uh, about 60 thousandths a side and just so I can blow the outer perimeter of it off and then I'll go back through take the bushing off and make a cleanup cut that only cleans that 60 thousandths off and that'll be uh, that'll, it'll give it, produce a nicer finish that way so oh and also <clears throat> well, after I do that we'll start moving on with the uh, key and the depth stop here but I also got this little pin gauge so the first uh, spot on the pin gauge is uh, the highest point and that catches the first step in the pattern, which is basically the perimeter feature. So let's see if we can knock it out here.
lap one, you can see you got a pretty decent finish on the uh, foam block. I do that with the guide bushing because, um, you know, if you take that depth of cut, you can't clear the chip very well, and it doesn't leave a very good finish on the foam, cutting on both sides and not being able to clear the chip. So if I just use that guide bushing and cut it just to, you know, 60 thousandths bigger around the perimeter, take the guide bushing off with the bit in open air, you get a really nice finish on it. So, uh, so now um, it's time to go back and do the, the rest of the features uh, on this. So that's the first pin position and, and the uh, uh, first uh, um, depth cut. But uh, the next one is actually going to be the same pin position. But um, the uh, uh, just short of that for cutting the depth of the uh, the main well. So we'll put the first one in there, and. Can't quite get over the pin. So I'll get over the pin, get into the well. Get back up to the right height here. I think on the next time I cut it, I'll set the, uh, the router bit up in there a little bit higher because I can't get the pattern up over the pin um, with the uh, actuator retracted all the way. So I need about another half inch worth of, uh, of uh, headspace there. But uh, let's see here. Uh, there we go. All right, now we're ready.
satisfied ears here. <laughs> Fixture still got the, the plugs in it. Push the plugs out. Back on there. All right. <clears throat> Get the key back out and the pin gauge. 
but uh, let's see what we have. Uh, oh, look at what we got here. So, uh, so there's the uh, cut main well from there, and I think we got all the features out. Looks like all of them are in there. And see how it looks there, the exterior of it. And then uh, there's the inside feature. Now there's a couple more operations. I take um, these plugs and I turn them around. There's just a little relief that gets machined in the bottom here. And then this gets routed out. And then there's a uh, boss that I uh, machine in here. It's a separate piece that I glue in to complete it. But uh, that's, uh, you get the, the gist of it, I'm sure, from looking at it. So yeah, it's a carburetor main well on the pen router. That's it for today, folks.